All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you from San Diego in the USA. And today I'm delighted to be joined from across the world from Professor Rao, who is in Hyderabad in India. How are you doing, Professor? Uh, good evening, uh, John. Thank, thank you for this opportunity. It's a pleasure to be on your show today. Oh, thank you very much. So, Professor Rao is the father of soft leadership and the founder of the MSR Leadership Consultants in India. And he's authored numerous books, including the 21 Success Sutras for CEOs. And this and uh, the, his book, The 21 Success Sutras for Leader, was selected as the top 10 leadership book of the year by San Diego University. So, local to us here. And his latest book is called See the Light in You, Acquire Spiritual Powers to Achieve Mindfulness, Wellness, Happiness, and Success. Okay, so, uh, Professor, there is a lot of talk about mindfulness, and you hear the term thrown around a lot by people, and now there's mindfulness workshops, and there's mindful, mindfulness podcasts and books. But what is your actual definition of mindfulness? And given the fact that we're in this kind of world global crisis right now, how can mindfulness help us through this, this crisis? There's a huge talk on mindfulness for the last many years. And it is more relevant in the current tough times, especially COVID-19. People started realizing the importance of mindfulness uh, more because of this coronavirus. It has uh, connected all human beings and brought them into one platform. This mindfulness is uh, very much essential. Why? Because uh, people are very much stressed. There is burnout. There is VUCA, volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity globally. So although people have money, but uh, they are not happy in their lives. Mm -hmm. So what is required is that they should be they should observe certain practices. Uh, they should uh, follow certain things so that uh, they can provide uh, uh, meaning to their lives. This mindfulness is all about living in the present without bothering about the past or especially the unpleasant events and without unnecessarily bothering about the future, which can't be mm -hmm. predicted. So mindfulness is all about living in the present, adding right. value to the communities and uh, living your life with purpose and meaning. So, so Professor, uh, one of the things that uh, obviously it's, it's difficult for, for people because they tend to obviously look back a lot, uh, uh, one way or another, regret, whatever, and then there's there there always seems to be a certain level of dissatisfaction with where you are today so we tend to look forward a lot and living in the moment or living in the present uh, seems to be very difficult i think it was james joyce the irish writer who said it's like living at arm's length from yourself when you yeah. don't when you can't live in the present so why is it so hard for people to live in the present the challenge is that you know uh, the technology has brought many comforts and uh, technology has also brought certain uh, challenges so people are connected to this uh, mobile phones uh, mm -hmm. so various aspects through which they are being distracted and uh, people are ambitious by nature they want to prove themselves so they want to work hard they are getting into rat race so what they must do is, uh, they must uh, ensure work-life balance. That means some hours they have to fix for work, some hours they have to fix for uh, their uh, families. It's like, you know, a balancing personal, professional, and social life. That's what is required. Mindfulness emphasizes balancing personal life, professional life, and social life, which is very much required. But mm. because of the uh, technology, and uh, artificial intelligence and uh, uh, this fourth industrial revolution, uh, people are facing uh, so many challenges and uh, they are getting disconnected gradually with the uh, people. Uh, they are more connected with the gadgets. Yeah. So these are all the challenges. So 
at this scenario, mindfulness comes to the picture. That's the reason why there are so many workshops on mindfulness, uh, which are coming up across the world. And uh, the importance of mindfulness is uh, felt more in the current uh, COVID-19. Mm -hmm. So that is the situation currently. Yeah. And and so um, and one of the one of the interesting things is I mean as you just touched on is the more we have become technologically connected the more kind of disconnected we have become it's it's a paradox in many ways and and I think not just disconnected from each other but almost disconnected from our our own lives because we live so much through virtual worlds and through technology and and all of that so. What are some of the ways that you can start to bring your bring yourself back and maybe center yourself a little more in your own world? So what I implore is that you know we should uh, change our habits, practices, and uh, we should uh, ensure work life balance, and we should do uh, meditation, yoga, or some kind of exercises. Uh, so and we should uh, change certain uh, practices in the workplace. When you look at some of the companies like Google, they give enough time uh, to play, to enjoy in the workplace. So all those things, you know, will help uh, uh, employees uh, to recharge themselves and refocus on their work. So what is required is that, you know, we need to uh, ally with the technology. That means we need to harness the technology. Technology is uh, a double-edged sword. It is good and also it's bad. It all depends sure. on how you utilize it. So what is essential in the current context is that we should harness technology for social good to lead life meaningful. And what is and uh, and how do you dis how do people uncover what is really meaningful to them? Because I think here's an interesting one, Professor. I think most a lot of people to never ask themselves why they are doing what they're doing, whether it's a job or otherwise, what is motivating them and what, why they're actually doing it. A lot of the time is, well, they're doing it because you know, it's a paycheck and whatever. But I don't think a lot of people really ask themselves what their motivation is and why they do what they do. So the, the challenge is, you know, people are getting into the rat race. Mm -hmm. They're comparing with others. They are, compared, they are com competing with others. So in that uh, rat race, uh, they are not able to enjoy their lives. That is the challenge. So I have read a book of Victor Frankl, Man's Search for Meaning, mm -hmm. which is very much relevant even yeah. today in the current uh, tough times like uh, coronavirus. So what is required is that you know we should uh, always uh, search for uh, meaning in our lives. We should uh, introspect ourselves, we should reflect ourselves, and we should always look at what is really required in our life. And uh, apart from uh, growing professionally, we should also look at uh, what is really required to grow at the personal level, at the mm -hmm. family level, at the society level. So that kind of attitude is essential uh, in the current context to lead uh, uh, meaningfully and uh, to overcome the challenges due to tough times. Yeah, but it's interesting, isn't it? Because uh, the technology and our ability to distract ourselves with our phones, with streaming entertainment, with whatever it is, uh, it almost pre it prevents us in many ways from, or allows us to avoid any level of introspection or self-reflection. Yeah. So this is something then we obviously have to do, we have to address deliberately and say, okay, I have to put away all of these distractions. And and I think that's scary for a lot of people. It's it's scary for a lot of people to spend any time with themselves. Yeah. Um, so one of the things you talk about is um what is what is what is your monkey mind? Uh, uh see, human mind is such, you know, it keeps uh, uh getting distracted. Especially mm -hmm. because of technology, uh, it's good in some aspects, but it's not good in some aspects because people are easily disconnected. Mm -hmm. When you when we want to do something uh, because of email notifications or because of technology, we get distracted from creative work. 
around 10 years ago when i was writing a book you know i was focusing a lot on my creative pursuits but yeah. uh, for the last two to three years i am unable to focus on creative activities why because uh, there is a distraction because of technology social mm. media is good but again it has become bad in some aspects sure so this uh, uh, monkey mind means uh, mind won't be stable it keeps wavering here and there it's not a stable mm. mind so it happens right. for every individual and it happens to me as well uh, what happens when i write some books suddenly three four ideas uh, come up in my mind so i feel you know very challenging to focus on one activity and suddenly three four ideas uh, flash in my mind so what i do is i stop the creative work for uh, time being and go to my laptop and write down the ideas that have flashed at a time and mm-hmm. after writing them uh, then i come back and uh, start doing my creative work rather than i need i need to please my monkey mind otherwise what happens again that keeps distracting my creative work so right. this monkey mind is a very big challenge it is prevalent in all human beings but some people have little more some people have little less right right and obviously um if you if you've ever watched monkeys um they're not the best at yeah. uh, sit, at, at, at staying still and uh, concentrating on one thing at a time right yeah uh, uh, and also you know people you know they want to multitask which is not advisable why because mm-hmm. when you multitask you can't focus clearly on a task yeah. especially yeah. others like me others like me they can't uh, uh, multitask they uh, so what i do is i take a one task justify after completion of that task then i move on to the next task but at, when i do one task couple of uh, uh, ideas flash in my mind because of that monkey mind so then what mm-hmm. i do is i stop that work for a moment then jot down the ideas that uh, flashed in my mind uh, then again i come back to my writing and start doing it mhm yeah it's uh, it's interesting because that whole concept of of multitasking I was think it's not really multitasking it's it's doing a lot of things badly at the same time now it leads to stress this multitasking sounds good it's a corporate yeah. jargon it sounds good but when at the end of the day uh, when you look at the performance uh, yeah. which is not uh, fairly good when you multitask uh, yeah. on the other hand when you take a one task execute it effectively the results are better Mm-hmm. So obviously I mean we're in the in the midst of this pandemic right now and obviously uh, covid-19 is is very um it's a very aggressive uh, uh virus but you also say that there are are ways in, in the normal scheme of things where you can help to heal a, a disease and then this with your subconscious mind what are some of the things you can do to help yourself when you are when you are feeling ill uh see oh. Uh, joseph murphy has talked about uh, uh, subconscious mind mm-hmm. so we, we are uh, we operate uh, from conscious mind and subconscious mind right so conscious mind uh, when we go to sleep conscious uh, mind goes to rest but the subconscious mind operates 24 hours in a day so the subconscious mind is very powerful so whenever people have got challenges what they have to do is they have to feed their subconscious mind for instance you, you have a goal or you want you have a challenge yeah. if you want to come out of the challenge what you must do is 30 minutes before you go to the bed you commands to your subconscious mind that this is the challenge i am having i am going to come out of this challenge mm-hmm. keep saying 30 minutes before you go to bed to your subconscious mind and believe it it will have 18 times more effect on your uh, uh, entire mind and the next day morning you will find solutions that mm. the power of subconscious mind so i read so, that book uh, uh, joseph murphy's book which is very interesting so in the current covid 19 scenario also when people have got any virus infection or any other challenge or in general also what they have to do is uh, i am coming out of this uh, virus i am coming out of this virus so if they say uh, 30 minutes before going to bed then automatically they will be able to 
uh, overcome this that infection and they will be able to come out of uh, covid 19 successfully that is the power of subconscious mind yeah and i think uh, and i think it's easy for anybody to understand how this can work because let's face it if you go to bed stressing on something you tend to end up you know you wake up uh, more tired than uh, than you went to sleep yeah. so i mean there's so the there it's i mean so people have experienced it in the negative now you're saying this is how to leverage that power into the positive uh, see for instance uh, if someone has a goal for instance i have a goal to become president of india so what mm -hmm. i should say i am becoming president of india i am becoming president of india like that you know if i say 30 minutes before i go to bed uh, then it will work on my subconscious mind and it will change uh, my attitude, behavior, personality. And I start thinking to find out the ways and means to become president of India. Mm -hmm. So not only that one, anyone, if, you, if I want to win a Nobel Prize, so I have to say in a present continuous tense that I am winning the Nobel Prize. I am winning the Nobel Prize. If I say 30 minutes before I go to the bed, uh, then what happens? I start thinking uh that i'm winning a Nobel prize and i start uh, uh, exploring ways and means to uh, get Nobel prize and i'll i'll be able to focus on my energies and efforts to reach the goal of getting the Nobel prize so the power of subconscious mind is uh, very interesting and it is uh, proved beyond doubt that the way you want to become you can become even mm -hmm. indian saints and sages uh, they believed many years ago and they followed this and they are successful. Yeah, and I think it's, uh, and I think people, uh, and I think people in some ways, I mean, you know that maybe intellectually or whatever, but they, but they don't have the belief to put it into action. But yet there's so many examples of, of really, you know, visualizing and focusing on goals or whatever, and and, yes, and yes. those and those coming through. Um, yeah. Um, so one interesting thing I just say, and uh, we're talking with P Professor Rao in India. Uh, his book, uh, his latest book, is "See the Light in You." I see the uh, the forward was written by the by the Dalai Lama. That's. Uh, do you want to just tell us a little bit of interesting piece about that? Yeah, this the book uh, titled "See the Light in You." It's mm -hmm. very close to my heart. This is one of the best books I've ever written in my entire uh, career. His Holiness Dalai Lama has written a foreword for this book. And uh, I have dedicated this book to Vice President of India, Mr. M. Banke and I do. I admire him very much, so I have dedicated this book to him. This book is the need of the hour, not only because of uh, COVID-19, but in general, because mm -hmm. people have lost focus from life. So this book will help them see the light in themselves, okay? And it will, uh, it will provide a ray of hope for the people who are in the dark. So this book talks various aspects of wellness, mindfulness, work-life balance, and various aspects uh, that will uh, uh, make a person very refined, very successful, and uh, to lead his life with purpose and meaning. Yeah, and I think this is a very timely, timely book because I do think once we get through this this crisis and this pandemic, I think this is going to be a time when people are going to be more open to re-examine their lives probably than ever before. And maybe that's yeah. forced upon them, or maybe that's something they just go, wow, maybe I just need to take stock of everything because now I suddenly realize how fragile my, uh, my life as it constituted is. Yeah. So this book is made of the hour in the current times, especially the world is uh, uh, going through COVID-19. So I strongly recommend people to read this book. This book is available on Amazon. If they mm -hmm. Google Amazon and uh, see the light in you, and my name as Professor M. S. Rao. M means yeah. motivation, S means success. Are you yeah. if they Google, they'll be able to find this book and a uh, lot of reviews are available. And uh, 
the value addition for this book is that uh, His Holiness Dalai Lama has written a foreword. So yeah. uh, certainly yes. it's a feather in the cap of this book. I'm sure uh, this will be one of the best-selling books in the world. I'm also sure uh, that it will change the lives of the people to lead uh, better and uh, to lead their lives with uh, purpose and meaning. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Uh, so uh, so all of Professor Rao's information and a link to the book and everything will be in his contributor profile that goes along with this interview. Listen, Professor, this has been fantastic. I'm really glad you were able to join us all the way from Hyderabad in India uh, today. And as I said, I think your book is, is such a timely one because I do think uh, this is in every crisis, there is opportunity. And I think for, for individuals, this is a fantastic opportunity to, to reevaluate your life, to do some of that self-reflection uh, yeah. and introspection and really figure out um, how you want to live the most like positive and balanced life you possibly can. Yeah. So sure. um, thank, you, thank you for joining today. Um, hope you and uh, all of your compatriots in India stay safe throughout this uh, crisis. And uh, I look forward to you uh, coming back again uh, someday, uh, Professor, and talking to us a little more. I would like to add uh, a message from this book. This mm -hmm. book conveys with a message, health first, education second, and wealth third. This is the philosophy I emphasized in my life because I served in the Indian Air Force. Mm -hmm. So we should care more for health first, followed by yes. education, then automatically you will get the wealth. This is the message from this book. And the second message from this book is love your mother, but don't hate another person's mother. <laughs> uh, that means love your community, country, yes. culture, and your religion, but don't hate another person's country, culture, community. Uh, that is no, the another uh, message uh, which uh, strongly sends from this book. Yeah, I mean that, that that's a great message, and obviously, uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of conflict still in the world, and hopefully, maybe this is another wake up call for the world that, uh, to your point, that we need to move away from conflict and look about how we can work and trade and live together in peace and harmony. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, thank you very much, Professor. My name is John Golan from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. I'll see you all for another expert interview. Thank you very soon. much, John, for giving me this wonderful opportunity. It's a pleasure to be on your show. Yeah, you're most welcome, Professor. Pleasure's all mine. Yeah.